So we are selling oil. Crude oil is more than $50 per barrel now. We are still in a hole. It's simple arithmetic. Investors are not coming in. And if you ones are here, we want to send them away for political reasons, I dare say. If my colleague is talking about monopoly, Dangote is monopoly. Our refineries are not working. I stand here to be corrected. Our refineries are not working. The federal government says by 2019, we are going to have, we'll stop importation of fuel. It's a big lie. We are waiting for Dangote. Dangote is funded. The refinery is being funded by the government. So tell me about monopoly. There's monopoly. Stop it. Don't tell me about Intel's. Intel's is they're hiring Nigerians. If they must cancel that concession, let them investigate. And my colleague was talking about the courts. We know the courts are there. We know the courts are there. But Mr. Speaker, you are a lawyer. We have to protect the rest. If you send this information out, they can go to court. But by the time you get judgment, the damage would have been done. The motion is finally put to a vote. Those who are in favor of the motion as amended say aye. Those against it say nay. The eyes of it. The House has also called on the management of the Nigerian Ports Authority and the Attorney General of the Federation to reinstate the contract of Intel's Nigeria Limited pending the outcome of the investigation by the House. An ad hoc committee is to investigate the matter and report back in two weeks. committee of the whole. Meanwhile, a series of tweets on the Twitter handle of the Nigerian president appear to emphasize government's position on the Treasury single account policy. It reads, President Mohamed Buhari has instructed all government agencies to ensure compliance with his presidential order on the TSA. The TSA presidential order in August 2015 is intended to ensure greater transparency and accountability in the management of public funds. It is expected that this policy and its implementation will form a major part of the investigation that will be carried out by the House of Representatives. Now, the power sector is one sector that most people believe holds the key to transforming the economic fortunes of the country. This week, both chambers considered motions on different parts of the sector. Here's that report. During the week, the power sector was at the heart of discussions in both chambers in the National Assembly. In the Senate, a motion was considered on the sector. A federal lawmaker recalls the privatization exercise of the federal government in 2005, arguing that the exercise effectively limits the role of the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing to policy and oversight of autonomous agencies in the power sector. The Federal Minister of Power, Works and Housing... He voiced his concern that the Ministry of Power as currently constituted lacks the required competence and resources to execute some projects in the sector. What is that there are challenges of managing such projects because the Federal Ministry of Power as currently constituted does not have the required professional competence and resources to effectively execute these projects, hence the resort to engaging contractors and consultants for every project development activity. He also argues that the Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is going beyond its core mandate. What is that with the privatization of the power sector? The Federal Ministry of Power, Works and Housing is rapidly expanding its project implementation activities rather than limit, this to its, the limit its role to general policy direction pass one to section 33 of the EPSR Act 2005. The debate was thrown open and some lawmakers called for the separation of the portfolio of the Minister of Power, a move which they say will eliminate the conflict of responsibilities in the sector. The thrust of the ministry is to give policy direction. But what we find today is that the ministry continues to appropriate these jobs that are, being, that are specifically meant to be done by agencies under the ministry. So you find that the ministry is building uh, power plants, and so we think that it's an anomaly. Of course, we also use this opportunity to tell the federal government that there is need to break up that ministry. I think that one ministry, with all these myriad things, is actually too much. It is very clear that there is, 
this discrepancy in having one man, man very many major ministries. And it's, it is now right for us to ask that the power ministry be taken out so that somebody can oversee it and ensure that that is properly taken care of. The upper legislative chamber also urged the federal government to immediately incorporate special purpose vehicles for implementation of alternative energy projects. Meanwhile, in the House of Representatives, lawmakers considered a motion which sought for an investigation into allegations of violation of the Constitution and the Fiscal Responsibility Act by the transmission company of Nigeria. The House knows that the prioritization of the power sector under Section 8 of the Power Sector Reform Act 2005 gave birth to the Transmission Company of Nigeria as one of the successor companies in the sector. The House also knows that Section 9, under Section 9 of the Act, the TCN is a wholly owned, is wholly owned by the Federal Government of Nigeria through the Ministry of Finance Incorporated and the Bureau of Public Procurement, which holds the shares on its behalf. The House is aware that TCN has taken loans amounting to 1.5 billion US dollars from the World Bank and other international lenders over a period of time without complying with the provision of Section 44 of the Fiscal Responsibility Act. The House is also aware that the loans were utilized by the provision of the National Assembly contrary to Sections 80 to 83 of the Constitution. As amended, the House is further aware that TCN is currently negotiating another loan of 500 million US dollars with Islamic Development Bank and has been violating the provision of the Public Procurement Act in contract processes, as its contract processes are opaque. The House is to set up an ad hoc committee to investigate the matter and has eight weeks to conclude its work. The House Committee on Power has also been mandated to probe the approval given by the Federal Executive Council for a 701 billion Naira payment assurance facility for emergence and long-term power sector recovery plan. According to Representative Chris Azubogu, who sponsored the motion, the investigation will help ensure the process is geared towards significant improvement of power supply in the country.